Hello everybody and uh, welcome back to part 8 of the Bob Latino M125 uh, tube amplifier monoblock kit build. <laughs> Did I say that right? <laughs> it's a pretty long title. Anyways, uh, first thing I gotta say is that uh, this whole experience has been amazing, just absolutely amazing. Uh, gotta really give credit to, to Bob Latino for the great kit he put together and uh, the great instructions that he wrote. And if you follow his instructions step by step and verify every step, you'll I'll plug them in and both of them will work and uh, you'll be listening to great music. So that's exactly what happened to me is I, I did that and both amps started up flawlessly and uh, as you can see they're both in my system right now. The thing I added to the front of it was the power lights. You can see the two power lights and uh, I have uh, broke them in for 48 hours when I first plugged them in when they're both done. Uh, and during that 48 hours, I listened to music for about six hours, and then I had them off for about a week. And on the Friday afternoon, I turned the amps back on, did another couple hours of listening. And then the Saturday after that, I left them on overnight. And the Saturday after that, my friend Terry came over, and we set up, just checked the settings on my turntable, make sure that it was all good, so we get uh, premium quality sound for these amplifiers. And we found two things on my turntable were off a little bit, so we did the adjustments on that. And uh, then we did some listening to some records, and... And the amps are absolutely amazing. Can't really uh, say anything bad about them for sure. The uh, I had my Bob Latino ST70 before this one. It was a great sounding amp. These amps sound pretty similar to that, but they seem to be, uh, obviously have more power, they have more authority to the bass. Uh, but listening to both amps at about the same listening level, these amps seem to just have more clarity, more detail. The sound staging is much better. I find, I think it's just an inherent part of being monoblock is the sound staging gets improved. And what I find by improvements is that the instruments seem to be have a, a more defined placement within the sound stage. And because of that more defined placement within the sound stage, I think it just it made it sound more real. The instruments sound more real. It's a really pretty amazing, really sounds, they sound very well. And, uh, you know, there of course you have to team them up with some good components. So, you know, I have a vacuum tube audios, uh, SP16 preamplifier and vacuum tube audio is S or PH16, at least a 16, a phono preamp. So I have all tube equipment and running off a of Thorin's turntable, um, a modern Thorin's service, TD309 Thorin's turntable. And uh, so the source equipment is really well too, really good quality. So I got Roy Motrum's uh, preamps as kits. I bought them wired though, and you can buy them as kits just like the, the Balotino amplifiers here. And they're all available through Roy Moltrum's website, truthforhifi.com. Uh, you can get a link in the description of all my videos for this build series. If you go to that website, you'll see all the kits that uh, Roy offers for preamps and uh, amplifiers. Uh, and uh, also for uh, boards for vintage ST70s and things like that. So he's got a lot of things, both of them are really providing really good quality audio equipment for very reasonable prices and, and all available in kit form or upgrade kits for vintage equipment. So you can really get good value if you put it together. Of course, you can buy them wired. So Roy will, will wire the preamps and phono preamps and Bob will uh, wire the amplifiers that are available there. So... Uh, just getting back to the, the Balotino amplifiers that are available through tubes4hi-fi.com. <laughs> uh, the whole experience was great. Right from the beginning unboxing, all the video I made on them. Of course, there's a lot more work making videos of the whole process. It's a lot easier if you just build them, but it uh, probably took, let me see, about 12 hours per amplifier probably to build from start to finish. So I think I had an hour and a half on the one, one driver board at about an hour and a half on the chassis, I believe. So that's three hours and about six or nine hours, maybe 10, 10 hours or 12 hours. It was called 12 hours, an amplifier to build. It's a really rewarding experience. It was a great kit, all good quality parts. Everything fit together perfectly. The kit was, everything was included right down to the very last nut and washer. So we uh, really can't say enough about it. The, the sound quality is awesome. Unfortunately, I can't demo it for you because I don't have any copyright free material, I don't think on vinyl and I'll get my YouTube video blocked. So. No, I can't demo it and you're just going to hear it over there anyway, but uh, I'll pause the camera and I'll just zoom out a little bit and we'll take a look at uh, the whole system and so we can see what's actually the supporting components for these great amplifiers. And there's a second note, 
they heat up your house. There's no doubt about that. Holy moly, they put off a lot of heat. <laughs> so uh, you can save on your, you probably gonna increase your hydro bill, but your heating bill might go down. All right, so uh, here we are back at the, you can kind of see the system that the two amplifiers are in. So just take a closer look. We'll start at the turntable and work our way down to the amplifiers and uh, then you can be familiar. It's all available all in one place. So this is a really nice quality sounding system for a very reasonable price. You'd have a hard time to find this kind of sound for the money that you're soft to spend on these things. They're not inexpensive, I'm not saying that. But for what you're getting, the value is really there. So we'll start out with, uh, of course, just my Thorns TD309 turntable. It's got the cover on it. I have a, a cover on there. You can see the dust cover is custom made for the turntable. It kind of falls over the tone arm. Tone arm is pretty nice. That was bought as an accessory. It was separate from the turntable that come with it. It's a really nice turntable. Though. It's got a chassis, sub-chassis design that Thorns is famous for. And uh, really good sounding turntable for sure. I have really good cartridge on there, clear audio virtual, so two ebony cartridge. And that's a very nice cartridge. Uh, not inexpensive though, it's a, it's a you know, plus thousand dollar Canadian uh, cartridge. Very good sounding though, it has a really good frequency range, really realistic, very detailed, so it's very nice. And then uh, of course every turntable needs a formal preamp of some sort, so we got vacuum tube audios. Uh, S, uh, PH16, I believe it is. I don't think it's the 14, yes. PH16. And it's the style, the new style. It has the tubes exposed. You can buy it within a cabinet or within a, a chassis where it's all completely covered, like the preamp would look. Or you can buy it like this with the tubes exposed. I like the better with the tubes exposed because you can see the tubes. I like to see the tubes. Now, the holes that are on the top, I put those in. Those don't come from back in tube audio. So this one was wired by Roy Motrum. I bought it from, bought it from Roy Motrum at tubes for hifi.com And... Uh, uh, he did a beautiful wiring job on that, but you can buy it as a kit so you can save some money and uh, you can wire it up yourself just like I did with Bob Latino's M125 amps. And then, uh, of course, feeding into the preamp. So it feeds into the preamp. So that's back in tube audios, SP16 tube amp, which uses 6S and 7 tubes. Very nice uh, uh, preamp, of course. You can buy this in kit form or have it wired. I bought. I didn't buy this right from, from Roy. I actually saw it on eBay, which is pretty rare because typically they're not sold. When people buy them, they don't sell them. Uh, but the seller was claiming it was wired by uh, Rod Motrum. And when you open up that case, it looks like a beautiful wiring job. So we believe it is wired from Rod Motrum. It was a single owner preamp. So I bought that on eBay. You can buy it from Roy. You can buy it wired or, or as a kit. It would actually be a pretty easy kit to put together. It wouldn't be too difficult if you have some a little bit of soldering skills for sure. And it's a great sounding preamp. It's, uh, if you want more details, go to Roy's website. So the link's in that description. You can read all about it. And then, of course, from the preamp is going to the Bobatino amp. So these are the beauties of the system for sure. Certainly uh, just love them. And uh, you can get full details on this amp also by looking up the, the details at Roy Motrum's website. I'm running with the KT120s. And so four per channel. And then I'm running the Solid State uh, WC68 Solid State rectifier instead of the GZ34 rectifier. Here it's just got more capabilities for the current and, and power that the KT120s are going to demand if you start turning up the volume. So it's just a better choice so that the rectifier tube doesn't work so hard if you're using the tube. The GC34 has a hard time to keep up, I think, the kind of requirements of kit four, KT, four KT120s. And there's a the driver board close up. And uh, there's the other one there. So they're really beautiful, beautiful amps, and they sound very, very good. Uh, when Terry and I listened on last Saturday, we certainly were uh, very impressed with the sound that we we're getting. So we thought about that. And uh, I really, I've never had a stereo sound as good as this in solid tube. Now I took all my solid state stuff out. If you watch my other videos, I took all my solid state stuff. I'm not sure what to do with that yet. But this is the way it's staying for now. It's all tube basically. And I can use digital. It's just a PC, small mini PC there with a DAC. CD drive on the left, and a USB hub on top of that. So also use more digital content, and then I have a monitor there. You can see that it's just on screensaver right now. So I've got a monitor to uh, play the digital, digital stuff or anything off streaming off the internet, whatever you want to do. But primarily, I listen to vinyl, and that's the system, and that's uh, Bob Latino M125 kit, monoblock kit that I put together from scratch. So I did it. 
successfully, had no issues. I had a couple times I emailed Bob, asked him some questions. He came back right away, like almost immediately. It's almost like he was waiting for me to ask him something. <laughs> and uh, so he uh, responded immediately and resolved any kind of issues I had. I did have a, a slight hum on it when I first plugged it in. So I asked Bob about it and he said it's probably ground loop to get a three prong cheater plug. So basically you're separating the ground from the wall to the chassis. So you're not grounding the chassis to the AC wall, to the AC outlet anymore. And the hum went away, they're virtually silent. It's on right now and I'll shut up so you can hear there's no noise. You probably hear my furnace running. So unless there's any sound you hear, you might hear the furnace, but it's virtually silent. So uh, that's all that issue. That was no big deal. When I did the kit, I basically the second the second amp went pretty much flawless. I made no errors. I verified everything. Every time when I did verify, there was no errors. The first amp I made two errors. I had a wire go to the wrong place one time. Then I actually forgot to or didn't pay attention to the instructions to solder two points on the multicam cap. So when I did my verification, I just first verification was to make sure I soldered everything. So I made sure every joint was soldered and it looked good and it was everything was solid in it. And I found two joints in the end solder. So I had about five wires, probably never got soldered to the cap can, but I discovered that my verification. So you got to go step by step, go slow, be careful and verify everything. So I verified, the final verification was to verify every wire went to every location correctly. And then when I plugged in, I had no issues. It all plugged in fine. I set the bias levels and away we went. So I guess that's about it. Uh, certainly visit, uh, click the link in the description to visit the website and you can see Robert Moltrum's kits and See the Bob Latino amplifiers that are available. So there's several different ones. There's ST70, there's M125s, and ST120. And so it's all good. And if you have vintage equipment, you can get some uh, upgrade boards for the ST70s and stuff like that. And it's, it's very, very nice site and certainly can provide you with some great tube sound. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, thank uh, Roy Motrum and Bob Latino for their great tips and the great sound. My music room is amazing right now. I just can't believe how good it sounds. And I, I really can't see myself making it any better <laughs> so again thanks a lot and thanks for watching